with Teja against Fantasy. In the upper left, he needs to come back. Can he do it? He is. Liquid Teja. That's so fun. That's just a hand gesture. I was trying to think of something I could say, like that he would be saying when he did that. Hold on. In the bottom left, we have one of the greatest Brood War players of all time. He is. SK Telecom T1, Pantaji. He came from the streets of Brood War. <laughs> the rough streets of Brood War. Yeah. The right side of the tracks. That's right. Mm. It's like the rough neighborhood of esports. Mm -hmm. Brood War, man. Brood War. That's, uh, Everything is basically easy in life if you grow up playing Brood War. That's true. That's I'm like, well, most I'm successful like, people in the whole world, in my opinion, are <laughs> probably Brood War players. Brood War players yeah. yeah. They can accomplish absolutely anything. Pretty much anything. Yeah. It's like, take over a, you know, take over, I don't know, uh, paint the most beautiful picture. Yeah. Learn well, they already have language. done that. It's already, it's already, it's easy because Brood War was so ridiculously hard. Yeah. Like, literally, this is actually something I do believe is. I actually believe this. I'm not even trying Brood to joke. War, like, no, this is like, it's Brood, such a hard thing. that I don't if know you, what was harder than Brood War ever was. If you gave a good set of years of your life just to learning the hardest, ridiculousest game ever. Yeah. You're a better person for it. You're better. Per you're actually a superior person. And some uh, people are like, oh, I don't believe that some people are better than others. Well, guess what I do? Brood War players I think are. Brood War players are better <laughs> people. And, uh, you know, they're they're showing it quite well. Look at how well Kespa players, like, they haven't been playing StarCraft 2 as long, no. But, and even in, uh, you know, overall, obviously people who have played RTS before are going to do better. And there aren't that many RTSs. But uh, overall, the Brood War players are really showing a lot of uh, skill, a lot yeah. of talent. And they're pushing the envelope a lot quicker than anyone really expected. Like... People are looking at innovation, and be like, "What the hell are you? What? How? Who is this guy?" Closest we had to that I'm before like, oh, was like Gumio, and Gumio is great. But like, is it the same as innovation? Not quite. Not quite yet. You know, he's he was probably get there one day, but yeah, yeah. Brood war, brood war, man. Brood war, brood war. Wars of the brood. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, man. Brood war is so hard that you had to like learn. How to, how to unbug your Dragoon in the middle of a battle. I'm like, oh, yeah. just stop moving. Oh, I got to spam S and then get back to my ground. Terran players Ooh. had to learn how to... Oh, oh hold Look on. Look at Fantasy's Marines. Oh, he's oh. trying to guess. Doesn't guess correctly. He's like, he'll think I'm near my barracks, so I'll stand over here. And Tasia's like, he's not going to be near his barracks. Why would he be there? <laughs> he knows <laughs> I'd jump somewhere else. No, so um, said, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on. While we were uh, talking about how great Brood Wars is, we have, we have a double Reaper build here. For uh, for Tasia, he's actually gone for he's the He's doing uh, what Brain King did, right? Yeah, this yeah. Is the Brain same King build. did against uh, uh, Zerk, though. This is gonna be cool. Oh, Tasia. Cool, Tasia. Well, we actually have a starport on the way uh, in Widow Mines. Of course, a Widow Mines gonna do pretty well against Reapers. They travel in packs, Tasteless, when you go for two racks. Traveling. <laughs> they walk in lines to hide their numbers. <laughs> now, um,. We got the Marines coming up here, and the Reapers are going to go around. And this is a large number of Reapers that are going to do this. This could do a quickly. lot of damage, in fact. Look at this. Tasia's going to be going for what? it, and he's going to fight one Hellion. Now, Hellion's not going to know what to do. He's going to have to make a Banshee. This can actually do so much damage. Now, you saw it. You should have seen that uh, mine over there. Yeah, but the thing is, does he pick it up? They'll kill it. Yeah. He's going to lose a ton of SCPs. He actually just can't. He actually I think Tasia just... might just deal too much damage here. Wait, did he supply cap him? Oh my god, he did oh supply cap Oh my god, cap him. this is actually really bad. This is getting a little bit weird, but do we actually... Okay, we have a Banshee on the way. So the Banshee will stabilize things, but these Marines of Fantasy are making such a difference. It's actually... I can't wait to see how many kills these guys both have with these units. 15 to 20. Oh, Good job, Oh, he gets... Well, the mine does go down, actually. These three Marines are pretty badass. Uh, but are. these Reapers are just doing so much damage. Oh, okay. I think I we might have to go to game three. This is like well, the Banshees coming out. Oh, they're both on thirteen SCVs. This is oh, are they really? Yeah, this is closer than it seems. But the thing is, huh. you can't move out the Banshee really. Yeah, the Reapers will just go back inside the base. Yeah, well, I guess he has to anyways. He has to go deal more damage. But Tage is making a lot of Marines right now, three at a time. Uh, so he should, because he already has two out. He should be able to actually hold on. Look at this. This is such great harassment. 
Oh, man. Oh, my God. There's just so many that, SCBs killed. That Reaper gave himself a swarm tasteless. All right. Now, the Banshee's going to have to do some fantastic micro, and it will, but I don't think it'll be enough. I think Tasia's just straight up won with this awesome two racks Reaper opening. Yeah. Cool build, by the way. Yeah, really, really cool. This is just... These Reapers are just not going to die. Let's see how the Widowmine does. <laughs> He's down to three SCDs. Two. Is well. he going to get one? All right, wow. well, he, gets, he well. has two left. And his Banshee's dead, right? And there's going to be Missile Hurts, three SCVs against 16. I don't think we need to talk much more about this game. Yeah, this is... What's going to happen is the Banshee's going to fly around, and he's going to try to kill every single SCV with two Banshees, one of which is Deep Red. And if he can't, he's going to GG. <laughs> Guess what right. he's not going to do. Oh, God, even combat ship's finishing. Goodbye, Banshee. Oh, two hit points. That's a very low HP Banshee. That Corporal's going home to retire. I wouldn't be surprised if that uh, Corporal Banshee just uh, declares mutiny and just mm. goes over to Tage's side. Yeah. Uh, well, what he's going to try to do is get all the Marines basically with the Widowmine, and we'll see if that works. <laughs> Oops. People nah. are getting really good at dealing with Widowmines, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, it took some time to get used to, but people are good now. Yeah, I don't think that there's, <laughs> like, even a point... 0-1% chance that Fantasy can take it from here. Yeah, 7 SCVs against 24. His, his army consists of 2 Banshees. Tasia is actually going for a starport, so he'll probably just make a Viking and attack, move it across the map and kill everything. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, this is this is a situation for Tasia where all he has to do is make stuff, mm -hmm. make workers and arm yeah. attacking units, and yeah. then in uh, maybe 2 or 3 minutes, maybe a little bit more, it just... You just one A's across the map. I think uh, Fantasy's going to try to get lucky. He's getting a reactor on the factory, so he might just go reactor widow mines with a few banshees and see if he can just trick marines and lure marines into that and try to come back like that. Because he's like, well, I may as well give it a little bit of a try. These these units still are a bit untested. Maybe he can get something to happen. But his economy is just so poor right now that he is all in on one base. Like, he yeah. Got, if he makes a command center at any point, I'll be like in such shock. There's a better chance this is of him making a command center in his opponent's base because he somehow did come back. I think there's than a better chance of, one of our audience being trampled by an elephant, actually, than <laughs> coming back. Yeah, there, that's, uh, that's probably true as well. Yeah. Now, um, I think uh, wouldn't that be terrible if then an elephant trampled the uh, audience, though? That would be like, really sad. Um, well, now we have, okay, GG. GG. All right. And a back, what are you going to do? All Not right. Well, Tage is happy about that one. He's like, I got him with those Reapers. That was such a cool build, that double racks. Yeah. Oh, well, man. Well, the funny thing about it is that if somebody's going to go double racks, Reapers against you, you're not allowed to leave your base. Yeah, well, yeah, and the funny thing is those four Marines, like, kind of saved him. Because if those were at home, he actually would have eventually lost them, and the Reapers still would have done a lot of damage. Yeah. But maybe he could have gotten, like, a couple Widow Mines out to help or something. And yeah. maybe he could have stemmed it earlier. But the Marines did a lot of damage to Tage. It's just... The Reapers were so valuable. He just kept healing, microing so well. He dealt with the mines absolutely fantastically. Well, it goes to show you how strong Reapers are with that regen because they can do a ton of damage. And if you're microing them, they're going to get all that HP back. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you really got to commit to well, taking out those Reapers. Mm -hmm. So our final map uh, for these two, at least for now with this first best of three, is going to be Daybreak. Who do you think takes this? You know, I'm still going to go with Fantasy. I mean, um, fantasy was hit, hit so hard with those Reapers. I'm going to edge in Fantasy. Yeah, I think yeah. Fantasy is going to take it. But uh, I mean, Tage could. I, I would not be blown away if I'm like, oh my god, I can't believe Tage beat Fantasy. But I just really am leaning towards Fantasy here. Yeah. Uh, Daybreak, a classic StarCraft 2 map. Our oldest map. Probably the best map still. Uh, it's definitely one of yeah. not my favorite map anymore. Yeah, but just, you know, solid balance, man. All right, yeah. We're going to go into this final match between these two to see who's going to go on to the winner's group of the GSL Codex Group D.